Welcome to our fifth episode. We are in September 2020, seven months into a global pandemic that has crashed the world economy faster than any other crisis in history. As if the world stopped spinning, all of us were thrown into a deep abyss. None of us were prepared for this. No scenarios, no imagination, no script could have foreseen this global disaster. In this global crisis, we have overlooked an even greater danger. Something looming in the near future that if not dealt properly with efficiency and vision will bring the world into a greater turmoil. A starving world. Because of the global crisis of COVID-19, because of millions losing their jobs, people will have a hard time finding food for their families and for their children. In July 2020, United Nations and food and agriculture organizations have issued a stark warning to the whole world. By January 2021, there will be 3 billion people in hunger, acute hunger, and up to 600 million people in starvation. The reason very few of us have heard of this, it's because most of these people starving or hungry will be in the developing world, Africa, Asia, Eastern Europe, and parts of South America. In the developed world, we have always had more food than we needed. We all know that. In the West, food is produced on a mass scale. However, in the developing countries, this will present a huge danger. Already, we are dealing with masses of refugees driven by hunger, persecution, or corrupt governments. But in the West, the more food we produced, the less quality we enjoyed in our, on our table. Our drive to make more profit has taken us to tamper with the chemistry and the DNA of our food sources. We now have strawberries that grow the size of a tennis ball, perfumed to smell like strawberries, colored to look like strawberries, but they have no taste of strawberries. We grow chickens now in three weeks to adult size because we want food faster in greater quantity. But in this process, we lost the good quality of the taste of our food. We inject our cattle with antibiotics and we feed them dead animal mixed with protein that makes them grow faster. This is the situation in the West. As we move to the developing world, the other half of the world, as we were talking, almost three billion people. Most of these people right now are struggling to buy bread for their families. The massive loss of jobs in Asia and Africa left millions of people not being able to even pay to buy bread or the necessary food for their children. An amazing proverb says, hunger will make a thief out of any honest man. This cannot be more true and more real in our world today. The desperation for food will drive people to do anything the people in power say that control the food supplies so they can get a little bit of food for their families. For me personally, I have a bigger issue in my mind. You all know how much passion I have for the children of Africa and the children of the world. And I am concerned about the starving millions that are gonna be present in our world in the next few months. So what is the solution? Because I've been searching and searching ways and solutions to provide food for our children in Africa. And this is the answer. We need to plant more food. Africa has some of the richest soils in the world. It is so fertile, everything basically grows there. What we're lacking is seeds. It's the source of food. So I'm asking you today, because we're living in a month to go to Africa, I want to get as many seeds, to plant as many 
possible crops in Africa. We want to give in every village that we see on our way. And we want to spread as many, as many seeds as possible for these people to plant food. Because it's spring in Africa now, it's the perfect season, the rains are coming, they don't need irrigation, they don't need anything else, they just need seeds to plant food. Because in the coming year, they will need this food to survive with their children. As I said in my previous episodes, we have one million orphans in Zambia and five million orphans in Malawi. Who's gonna feed these children if anybody else in those countries cannot feed themselves? So today, I'm asking you if you are in the position to help with seeds, and I wanna be very clear here, we cannot take GMO, genetically modified seeds. We need to take natural seeds so we plant in Africa and we don't bring GMO to Africa. So if you have capability, a capability to help us by sending seeds to us, get into contact with me through the email on the website or Facebook Messenger. If you cannot help with seeds, make a small donation to our cause, to our project. So we can buy seeds straight from Africa, from the suppliers, and distribute these seeds to anybody we can. The more we have, the better outcome it's gonna be for these children. I've tried it before. It's very powerful. The impact is amazing. I've tried it before and it works. I brought tens and tens of kilograms of seeds with me from all over the world. And the crops we created on our property in Zambia and to the villages that we, we talked to and we visited, the result has been amazing. So get in contact with us. This is another amazing project because Desmond Tutu said, the good news to the hungry, it's not words and promises, it's bread. And this is exactly what we're trying to achieve in our projects in Africa.